Hi and welcome to the Daily Die Cut with Craft Beautiful magazine. I want to show you today how you can do more with your thin dies. Thin dies were designed for cutting thin card and paper. Um, I think they're acid etched so the blade in them is quite short. So obviously if you're trying to cut something thicker than the depth of your blade you're not going to be able to do it. You'll make a nice indented impression in it but you'll never cut all the way through it. But with layering you can create a really sturdy faux chipboard frame and what's nice is all right you can get thick dies for cutting through chipboard but they're not as intricate as the thin dies are i mean this one especially this one was designed as an envelope flap so all i've done is i've cut four of these well in fact i've cut 16 of them glued them together and put them around a frame so you can hang that you know you've got a really nice frame to hang on your wall and it looks like wooden fretwork so take a piece of grey board if you're like me, you save your cereal packets because they might come in handy. And just cut through. If you're in any doubt, take it back again without moving the die. No, that's cut perfectly. The other thing I found actually, because not all the dies are the same depth, if you find that your die is struggling to cut through even the thinnest cardboard like a cereal packet. If you put a shim underneath one of your cutting plates, um, and I've tended to use a sheet of acetate for that, just the normal acetate that you would have in card making, just gives it a bit of an extra squeeze to get it right through your... Oh, I just chuck that on the floor like I normally do. So I've cut several of these. What I'm also going to cut is I'm going to cut one from decorative paper because this is going to go on the front of your frame just cut your square this is a nice textured paper um, it's one of the first edition paper pads that it came from and it's a Tanya Whedon design I've got some beautiful fabric that she's designed I do like Tanya Whedon very, very nice florals. They're quite romantic and vintagey. So again, just cut that and pop out all the pieces as before. And the other thing I found, if you're using intricate dies, sometimes if you've got really fine twiddly bits. They don't always want to come out particularly well. I've found that if you push your cut design towards the back, if it is going to get caught on anything and it's going to tear, what it will do is it will tear the surround. It won't tear your die cut and spoil the shape of the die cut. But most of these die cuts now, I mean, they're, they're all tested to the highest standards. Um, if you find you've got a problem with your die cut, you'll probably find it is actually because you're using something that's a bit too thick and uh, the cut, the die is not manly enough to get through there. But I mean, this is a Sizzix die that I've used. Um, touch wood, it won't, as I say, it won't cut through chipboard, but it's pretty good at cutting through almost sort of 280 GSM card. Certainly it will cut through a decorative paper like this easily. So let's just pop out all the rest of these bits. So that will be on the front of my frame and I'm just going to cut another one from card because this will go on the back of the frame. Oh, I thought I'd lost that for a minute. Wind it through. What you want to do with this one is try and leave it in its entirety. Well, I say its entirety. What I mean is, if you leave the crest in the middle and all the, the twiddly bits, because I want them to show through the rest of the frame. It's little scrolls that get me every time. There you go. So you can take it out in one fell swoop. It has all been cut on the back. 
but it's holding together quite nicely at the minute. So let's just move some of these bits to one side because this is where it gets really messy. Well, it doesn't have to get really messy. This is where I am really messy because I'm a bit slapdash. Um, Mod Podge Adhesive. Um, there are obviously other brands of PVA available, but I've found Mod Podge to be probably the most foolproof. I'm just going to pour some in the lid. That is bad practice, pouring it in the lid, because what you find is if you don't clean the lid out completely, when you then come to stick with the thing, the lid back on your tub and you let it dry, the glue is so good you can't actually get the lid off. So just paste this on. So Mod Podge is water soluble. So you're going to get a bit sticky, but as long as you've got some kitchen towel to hand, it'll be fine. So paste that on and place another thin chipboard one on the top. Hold it down. Restick it. I normally apply glue with a sponge, actually sponge it on, but that is really messy and um, for the sake of you, the viewer, I'll try and keep things so that it doesn't look quite so much like a dog's dinner. But I would normally put more glue on than this because I want to make sure that the very edges of it still stay stuck. So this is getting quite repetitive for you, I do apologise. But the other good thing about Mod Podge is it is such a good glue, you don't need gallons of it. And also, a lot of the cereal packets have got a coated surface on them. Where they've done the printing, it's quite a shiny surface, but the Mod Podge sticks really, really well on them. So what I'm going to do is put my top decorative frame on here. And as you're pasting, it doesn't matter if you get glue to go down the holes because all it will do is it will just bond it together better on the edges. Oh. Line it up nicely. And if we'd had more time, what I would do is I would lay this flat under a heavy book because although the Mod Podge isn't um, such a wet glue that it will warp the car, you know, if you use a thinner PVA, what you will find is your card will start to buckle. So put it between some paper, put it under a heavy book, and then you don't have that problem. But then what I am going to do is I'm going to paste this whole one. And the fact that I'm pasting over where the cut marks are means that as the glue dries, it will hold that background in. So you don't have to worry about it popping out. But just make sure on the visible bit, like the shield, because you will see the glue, and actually if you use a, 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 um, a luster, like a, a gloss glue, actually looks much nicer, but try and make sure your brush strokes all go in the same direction. That's just me being picky, because I do like stuff to be parallel and straight and symmetrical. And then if you lay this on top, and just check that it's all lined up with the rest of your frame. down well. And then once that's dry, you've got a really sturdy frame. You could put some 3D decoupage in the centre of it, some dried flowers. Whatever you choose to put in that frame, die cut a photograph and pop it in there. But the other thing though that you might want to consider is you will get a grey edge. If you don't like grey edges, just need to get some ordinary card making card and cut your layers from there, so then you've got a coloured edge. What you can always do, you can always paint around it, but if you can't be bothered doing it, cutting it out of coloured card does give a much nicer finish. So don't think that just because your dye is thin that you can only cut, or you can only create thin things. Layering it up, I mean you could layer up sort of eight, ten layers of chipboard and make a nice sort of freestanding alphabet, this kind of thing. So it's worth playing around with using the existing dies that you've got just to get a bit more out of them. So I hope that's given you 
a few ideas. I hope that you'll all have beautiful, intricate frames around your house this next year, and we will see you again soon. Thank you.